Hi folks, welcome to our virtual meet with uh, uh, <laughs> our webinar about virtual meets and Meet Maestro. Um, we have a lot of folks on today. And so um, I'm Ellie Overton, I'm Director of Sales and Marketing with Swimtopia. And with me today is my colleague, Tracy Nelson. Can we say hi, Tracy? Hi everyone, hello, hello. Um, Tracy is Director of Customer Success. So she kind of heads up our customer happiness team and works with a lot of our leagues. Um, so just a few, a bit of housekeeping while we still have people coming in. We have a really big uh, sign up today. So we're gonna have a lot of people um, on today. So if it helps, um, if there's any sort of lagging going on with your, with your Zoom, you might wanna turn off your videos. Um, if everyone can please stay muted, that would really help because it just is such a big crowd. We, we do wanna hear your questions and concerns though. So please do use the chat feature. Um, and if I'm talking, Tracy will be monitoring, monitoring chat. And if Tracy's, um, when she's demoing Meet Maestro a little bit later, I'll be monitoring the chat and we will be breaking in on each other and making sure your questions are getting answered. Um, so even though we'd love you to stay mute, if you can please just um, do chat questions to us, that would be great. Um, all right, well, let's get into it. Um, here we go. <laughs> All right, so Meet Maestro is Swintopia's meat management software and it was built to be intuitive and easy to use. Um, if you guys are familiar with, you know, the, the most common sort of meat software that's out there, it's sort of neither of those things. And so we really felt like it was time for kind of a fresh approach and um, to really create something that is easy to learn and easy to use for new admins coming on to learn about running meats. Um, and so that's been a big focus, but we've also want to build in everything that you guys are used to so that you can run meets the way you're used to running them. So we've really, you know, got a lot of great features packed into Meet Maestro and it is very powerful. So one of the great things about Meet Maestro is that it runs on a Mac or a PC. It runs best in a Chrome web browser. So you do need to have an internet connection, um, but we do have a lot of great safety features in there that you don't lose your data if the internet drops out. We'll show you those later. Um, but yeah, because it is run on the internet, it means that you can do all kinds of data sharing that has not been possible with other, with other Meet software as well. So um, it is really powerful. The other great thing about Meet Maestro is that for all of you on today that are already Swimtopia customers, it's included with your Swimtopia account. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to sign up for a Meet Maestro account or anything like that. Tracy's going to show you how to get to the Meet Maestro features within your Swimtopia portal. So there's really nothing for you to do and it's included. You've got nothing extra to pay. Um, you just get to access Meet Maestro. And then if you um, don't already use Swimtopia for team management, but you want to use our Meet features, then um, you can sign up for a Meet Maestro only account. So you can just get our Meet Maestro features and those are also free all the way through the summer. So um, we won't start invoicing for Meet Maestro until early um, in August. And when we do start invoicing for Meet Maestro as a separate account, it'll be $150 per team per year, but um, we will not charge if you're a Swimtopia account. So it will remain included for Swimtopia customers. Um, but the great thing, we've really decided this year that we really wanted to make it free through the summer. We know it's been an incredibly difficult year for everyone. Um, and a lot of teams are really struggling and we just really wanna make sure that the swimming community can bounce back as best they can, um, be able to run those meets and get some racing in, which is just so much fun for the kids and keeps, keeps swim season kind of exciting and fun and challenging. Um, and so the other great thing about having the Meet Maestro accounts for our Swimtopia customers that wanna swim against teams that aren't already using Swimtopia or Meet Maestro, um, you can invite other teams to use Meet Maestro and it's completely free. So they just sign up for an account. Um, and that actually, you'll see as we go through some things, how that will make it easier for you as the host team to be able to invite other teams and just let them use Meet Maestro. Cause we do things like merging your entries without you needing to swap files and things like that. So those free accounts are gonna sort of help everyone is what we're hoping, right? Have a great season. So what we're really talking about today is virtual meets, right? And this is my swim team from a couple of years ago. And unfortunately, swim meets can't look like this um, anymore. Even if you're able to have regular swim meets this year, which I know some people are trying to have a mix of some virtual and some regular, Meet Maestro works great for both. Um, but no matter what, 
it look, you know, it's not going to look like this this year, right? You can't have all your kiddos piled on top of each other. Um, things are looking better and we're all really optimistic, um, but we're still going to need to be really safe this year. So um, we want to make sure that teams are thinking about things like, you know, keeping social distance and being able to, um, you know, space out your ready bench. You're going to have to maybe not have your swimmers in an age group tent. You might have to keep them sitting with their parents. You're going to have to think about um, how many people are on pool deck? How many uh, are you going to let your parents on pool deck? Are you just going to sort of cycle in the parents as their kids are going to be able to swim so that they can watch? Um, we know that there's a lot of planning that's going to have to go into running your swim meets this year, no matter what kind of swim meet you run. Uh, we do have a lot of resources. It would have been in your invitation email. Um, we have a lot of planning resources. Please do check those out. Um, Tracy put a lot of work into uh, documenting and compiling different links to from USA Swimming and all the kind of resources that are out there to help you plan these kind of meets. So um, don't feel like you're on your own. Uh, everyone's kind of in the same boat trying to plan and we've got some resources there for you. So when it comes to virtual meets, you know, what, what is a virtual meet? Uh, it's where each team is swimming in their home pool so that you can minimize the number of swimmers that you have and kind of keep everything a little bit more controlled. Um, but when we talk about virtual meets at Swimtopia and using Meet Maestro, what's really cool is that we're able to score and place your meets as if you were swimming together. If, if the virtual meets are taking place at the same time, so you've got team A, you know, swimming at the, the blue pool over there and we've got team B swimming at the green pool. Um, if they're happening at the same time as the data is getting entered, Meet Maestro is updating the placing and the scoring and our mobile app is updating the placing and the scoring. And you're going to be able to see all of that information come in live. So um, it, virtual meets in this way, in this sense, it's, you know, at your home pool, it might, it might be going to feel like a little bit like an intra-squad meet, right? But with our software, we help you keep that excitement, that little bit more excitement. People can be watching how the other team's doing um, and you can keep up with those kind of friendly rivalries that make the swim season so much fun, right? So that's kind of the key difference is we sort of let you, um, our software helps you keep these meets a little bit more exciting and more fun. Um, so yeah, I guess I kind of got ahead of myself in terms of my slides. We do provide those uh, free features in the, um, well, actually they're pro features in our mobile app. If you want to really follow the meet and you want to get uh, swim reminders and you want to get results notifications and you really want to see everything that's happening, our mobile app is able to do that for you during your virtual meet. So this is really great. You know, you might have a lot of your parents are out in the parking lot. Um, Tracy's going to show you a little bit later and we're going to talk about how we have a live event heat bar in our mobile app that will show you what's happening in the pool. Now that is a free feature. Um, if you want to see the actual results and be notified when your swimmers are, results and things are coming in, that that's a pro feature. It's $2.49 per month um, or $9.99 for the year. Most summer teams, people will sign up for the month. It starts with a seven day free trial so they can check it out for your first swim meet, see if they like it. Um, and then it'll be $2.49 for the month. And then, you know, they can just cancel it when the swim season's done. So, um, but those kind of features are really what set Swimtopia apart. We don't know that any other meet software is able to show those results coming in live if they're happening at the same time. So um, we just have, we got a lot of feedback. We had hundreds of teams run meets last summer, even though, you know, things were a little crazy. We still had people that managed to pull it off. We even ran some championship meets last summer, which was exciting um, for us to see that that was still able to happen for some teams around the country. And people were really, really um, they really were excited about these features. They had a lot of fun with this last summer. So um, so that's sort of where, where we're coming from today. Um, I'm going to hand over to Tracy now. She is going to actually show you the software um, and what Meet Maestro can do and kind of show you how it works. Um, and just keeping in mind, folks, that um, if you've just hopped on a little bit later, you can please chat questions to us. We're going to keep people on mute, but please do be asking questions as we go and we'll be popping in and, and answering those. Um, and then we also, just to know, we do have a mix of some Swimtopia customers, some Maestro only customers, and then even some people who aren't customers at all of Swimtopia yet. So there's a really varying degree of people's familiarity with our software already that in our audience today. So um, we, do, we will be you know, following up with you all and if you need, uh, to we'll be showing you resources where you can dig in deeper if there's things that you, you're not familiar with yet. So, all right, on that note, I'm gonna hand over to Tracy. 
Awesome. Hi, guys. All right. Tell me if you can see my screen, Ellie. Not yet. There we go. Got it. As Ellie said, we're really glad that you could all join us today. And we're so excited to see how much interest that we have in the virtual meets. That's not the screen that I wanted to show. There we go. Um, we're super excited to see all the interest that we've had. And as Ellie said, we, we, we were saddened that probably about 75% of our customers last year ended up having to cancel their season due to COVID, including my own team and the team that Ellie used to be affiliated with here in Austin, Texas. Um, but we did have about 25% of our teams that were able to hold a season. And it was because we added the new virtual Meet feature to Meet Maestro. So Ellie, how long has Meet Maestro, this is our fourth year now with Meet Maestro. And- Yeah, we launched in 2018. So this will be our fourth season. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we've been running uh, live dual meets and even tri meets and multiple teams, championship meets and things like that. But last year we did a quick pivot and we were able to um, allow this virtual meet function, which is, as Ellie said, helps keep the meet super exciting and helps keep them safe as well. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and show you the screen here for my schedule for the um, Marlins demo team. And we'll talk about a few things. And as Ellie said, some a, a lot of you, I think already have full Swimtopia accounts. And so you're very familiar with this screen. This um, hopefully is something that you've been, whether you've been using Meet Maestro or not, this is something you're familiar with. We do have some folks who um, can use the Meet Maestro only account. They'll see a limited version of this. Uh, they won't see quite as many of the menu items here at the top, but everything we're going to show today, they will have access to. And so with that, let's get started. The first thing I wanna talk about is Meet Templates. That's a feature that's been out for a few years now and just making sure all of our teams are aware of it. The Meet Template, Let's take a look at um, this. If it has a badge next to it, it means it's being shared with you by your league. So we have the ability for uh, leagues that are Swimtopia customers to create a shared meet template and they can push that template down to their Swimtopia team sites. So we're gonna take a look at this um, dual meet template and what the meet template has is the list of swim events, all of the entry rules, including how many events a swimmer can swim, whether to accept seed times. There's a whole slew of these. Those of you who have used Swimtopia are probably very familiar with all of these little check boxes. Um, if you have any entry fees affiliated with your meet, which isn't as common with Summer League, we can also set up eligibility rules, which is probably more common for championship meets. But then this is the part that might be new for those of you who are not using Meet Maestro even though you've been using all of these other tabs within your meets, the seating and scoring tab is, is a tab that's only available to people using Meet Maestro. So if you've been ignoring this for the last few years, this is the time to start paying attention to it. So within the seating and scoring rules, um, and this template is locked, so I'm not able to, to change anything. Uh, but within the seating and scoring rules, this is where you set up your seating and lane assignments. Um, if you have for the summer leagues that have dedicated scoring heats and even dedicated scoring lanes within those heats, you can set up those rules here. Uh, you can set up any rules that you have about your time computation. And this is also where you set up the rules for your scoring and the points that you have for individual and relay events. So I'm going to go ahead and go to one that's not locked so that we can take a look. The reason that I wanna show you this too, even if you've been using these meet templates and even if you've been using seating and scoring rules, when you set up a virtual meet, you're going to wanna be thinking about what those seating rules look like because they could look quite different. So for example, for the individual events, uh, this particular template, I have it set to seed entries into lanes based on entry time. So that's going to just fill the pool. The fastest six kids, if it's a six lane pool, will go into the six lanes. Um, and some, if you're doing a live meet, a lot of teams will assign the lanes odd and even, home in the odd, or and visiting in the even, or vice versa, or they might split the pool in half. Let's take half the pool for this team, half the pool for that team. This is where you would set up those seating rules. But again, if you're doing a virtual meet, you'll have maybe some different situations. So what I've done for this virtual meet is I'm gonna say, let's fill the pool for the individual events, but for my relays, I would like to have a spacer lane because there's so many more extra kids on deck for relays. So let's create a spacer lane. So even if I don't have a visiting team, I'm still going to tell the system that I do. And I'm going to say that I'm going to put uh, the home team in the odd lanes and that'll help seed it so that there's an empty lane in there. So the thing to be thinking about, and as you can see in my list of meet templates here, 
is that if you think you might be considering some live meats this season, or maybe you're going to wait until later to see what the health situation is in your in your county or in your city. Uh, I know that some leagues are kind of like, well, we're, we're going to start with the plan to do virtual meets, but we might switch to live. Or we have some teams whose pools are being a lot more strict about how they're doing things. Those teams would rather do virtual meets, but we have some other teams who are going to have dual meets. So that you may have a combination within your league or within your own team. And if that's the case, I recommend that you set up two separate meet templates. So you'll have your live meet template and your virtual meet template. The other thing that I'd like to show you, and this is a new feature that came out a couple of summers ago, but since a lot of teams didn't have a season last summer, they may have missed that we actually have this now, but we can, you can import, I'm sorry, you can enter your record books. Uh, you can have it search your Swimtopia history to find new records, and then you can manually add new ones if necessary. And so you can set up as many record books as you'd like. And in this case, we have our, um, we have our team records, but then we've also set up pool records. Okay, so I'm going to take a look at our schedule. Uh, this is actually set last year. So we'll take a look at, we've got some meets in here and I'm going to go ahead and pull up this meet that we'll be looking at against the Stingrays. So one of the first things I'll show you is under meet setup, you're going to have linking. So uh, I think Ellie said that with Meet Maestro, the, the meet is run in the cloud and all the merging is done in the cloud as well. So you need to let your Swimtopia system know that you're competing against another team with Swimtopia, and this is the way to do it. So you're, you would have a linking code, and then you would copy this and send it to the other team, and then they would link their meet to yours, and that way we know that those meets go together. We do have some leagues that send us their entire schedule, and we import that schedule for them, and it pushes all of those meets down to their team sites. And when we do that import for them, it automatically has this linking already done. So you can see that I've got this code and the stingrays are already linked to my meet. And then within the meet itself, uh, everything to the right of this vertical bar, you can see look very, it looks very similar to what we had in our meet templates. You've got your events, entry rules, entry fees, eligibility, seating and scoring. And so if your meet is not locked to a meet template that maybe your league pushed down, sometimes they're locked, sometimes they're not. But if it's not locked, if you find out later in the season or right before the meet that you were set up for virtual, but you wanna do live, then you can come in here and make those changes to your seating rules if you need to at a later point. All right. So we've got our meet entries matrix. Those of you who are using Swimtopia are probably very familiar with it. It's super easy to use, very intuitive. We're going to do our one-click relay generator. Again, some Topia teams will be familiar with this and how fast it is. And voila, you can see we have all of our relays filled out. And now I'm going to go to my merge screen. So I'm going to lock out changes. And this shows me the teams that I'm linked to. So you can see that the stingrays are linked here. And it shows both of our teams are not ready. Uh, it shows how many athletes and entries I have in my meet. I can apply a record book to this meet. And since I'm the home team, I'll pick my pool records and my team records. So I'll add both of those. Um, okay, I'll set myself as ready, ready to go. Quick as that. So I'm gonna switch tabs. Um, you can see up here, I was on the Marlin site. So I'm gonna switch over to the Stingray site that I had already open. I have it open to their linking tab. You can see that this is where they're linked to the meet on the Marlin site. And we're gonna take a look, make sure they've got entries. Yep, entries are ready. So we'll go to the merge export screen. Lockout changes. And I can see on this screen right here that the Marlins are ready, ready to go. I didn't have to exchange any emails or any texts. They just set themselves as ready and I can see that they're ready. I'm gonna select my own record books. I'm not the home team, so I'll just pick team records and then mark myself as ready, okay? Um, super easy. I can go back to the Marlin side. I'm gonna go ahead and refresh this page. Okay, 
And now it shows I'm ready, shows that the stingrays are ready, never picked up a phone, <laughs> never had to send any files, never had to send a file, and then a text to say, wait, that wasn't the right one. And then a text to say, okay, now I've sent you the right one. <laughs> and a lot of the back and forth that used to take hours and sometimes days is done, as you can see, in just a matter of seconds. And each team does the part on their side. I can't see their entries. I just know they're ready. They can't see my entries. They only know that I'm ready. Um, and you can, I don't know if you noticed this, but this uh, button was white earlier, but now that both teams are ready, it has turned orange and it says I'm ready to, to build my meet. Um, for any teams that are not running a Meet Maestro meet, so, and especially let's say you wanna run Meet Maestro, but the home team that you're competing against is going to be running in high tech. You can still continue to do the download your export file like you've always done in the past before you use Meet Maestro. You just go to downloads and then you can click on this button. It'll create a high tech meet entry file for you. And then, then you do have to email that team and then you're into the file swapping. But we do have that available and we have complete compatibility with high tech. The other thing is that if you're competing against a team who's not using Swimtopia for their meet entries, and so you're they're not going to be linked to you and they're, they're not going to be listed here as ready to merge. Uh, if they want to email their entry file to you, they can do that. And so you can click on this white button that says upload file, then you can upload their meet entries file, and then um, that would be ready to merge. So you can run a Meet Maestro meet against a team who's not using Swimtopia and they can email that file to you. Then you get into a little bit of the file swapping. So as long as Meet Maestro is free until the end of the summer, then why not encourage them to just get a free Meet Maestro account and they can mark themselves ready and then there's no more file swapping. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and build the Meet Maestro meet bit before I do. Ellie, do we have any questions so far that we would like to share with, the, with everybody? Um, oh yeah, we've had some questions. <laughs> um, I was just I was just getting one about um, like if the teams are swimming at their own pools, how do you kind of match the event lists? And so I was explaining that really virtual meets are very are the same as regular meets in that way. You either share the event list using the meet templates, or you'd use an EV3 file, an events file in advance, and make sure that both teams have the same event list in advance. Um, we also had some questions about how it works when the teams are swimming on different days. You know how that's quite common where they don't, the HOAs have different rules and you actually can't both start the meet at 8.30 on Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'll let you cover that one, Tracy. That's a really good question there. Um, so once you're starting to enter your times and once we open up the Meet Maestro Meet, you'll see that uh, teams can be running their side at any point in time. However, you do need to have both sides ready with their entries beforehand. And so if one team wants to run theirs on Tuesday and the other team wants to do theirs on Saturday, there might be a big time difference. And so that's something to work out with the teams to make sure that the meet entries are ready for both teams, if that makes sense, so that you're ready to build the meet. Um, and then while we're doing questions, it's going to be easier for me to ask them and answer them than uh, type them right now because they're sure. coming in quite fast. Um, okay. I can you make if there's anything... I'm sorry, I didn't yeah. know if there's anything broad that you think everybody would benefit from hearing from hearing. hearing yeah, about. yeah. I mean, I do think all these questions are are kind of um, kind of like so. Someone was asking after you've locked a meet, can you still make last minute changes? Oh, that's a great that question. Mm -hmm. That's a really good question. So um, you will notice, you won't notice yet after you've locked the meet. Yes, you can go in and unlock, but if you do that, it's going to make this not ready. So if I go in here. Um, and then make my changes and then I come back. Oh, it does say ready. So my, I'm sorry, I had that wrong. So yes, you can continue to make your changes, um, but then once you've made the merge, then if you're starting to make changes, then it becomes really evident and I'll show you that in just a minute. Uh, but right now this says not merged. Um, if I go here that on the Stingray site, it also says not merged and it says both teams are ready. You could also mark yourself not ready and then go make your changes. And so if I come back over here, I would see that's probably what you ought to do because technically you're not ready, <laughs> right? So I come in here, I'm not ready. I can see that update. Um, and you can see when I marked myself not ready that this orange button isn't orange anymore. Okay, shall I proceed, Ellie? Um, yes, I'm gonna have to take a moment to get on top of all the questions that are coming in. <laughs> okay. okay. There was one about, um, and I think a lot of things you're gonna come to. So 
folks, there's a lot of things that we still have yet to cover. So yeah, yeah. if I'm not answering right up, um, it will be getting to it because there's some questions about course conversion and different length pools and some yeah. things like that. But yeah, yeah, that's yeah. all coming up. We'll definitely get yep. into that. Yep. Those are yep. good questions. Awesome. Okay, good. Well, let me go ahead and just click with the click of a button. We're going to merge the meet. Uh, so the thing to do, if it's a virtual meet, you need to make sure that you check this virtual meet button. So again, I've had teams who have said, what if we're not sure yet and we're going to decide two weeks in advance that this will, whether this will be virtual or not? Um, first and foremost, make sure that you have the right meet template for the seating rules. But secondly, it doesn't, there, you don't have to make that decision. The system doesn't need to know until you check this button. So as soon as you're ready to merge that meet, you tell it here that it's virtual. Um, it knows that your pool is short course yards. It remembers that my pool is six lanes, um, but let's say my pool is broken and I have to go to another pool. At least this gives me the chance to make that change if necessary, but I'm just gonna confirm it's my pool and I'm gonna hit the merge button. So when I do that, um, see the status here says not merged. Um, I've got my little status bar scrolling through saying that we're getting going, it says that we're starting the merge. We are currently looking at the data that the Stingrays has out in the cloud for their team, um, looking at records. Now we've taken, we've got the information for both teams. We're seeding the meet with the Marlins information and the Stingrays information. We're calculating our start times and we're done. Just like that, the meet has been merged. Super exciting. Um, the hours and the days that it used to take, <laughs> it's all done just in a matter of seconds. So what I wanted uh, to show you, somebody was asking, what if we need to make changes? So it, in the meantime, keep in mind, this has all been blind. I have not seen their entries. They have not seen my entries. Um, and at this point in time, this button uh, didn't used to be there, but once the meet has been merged, this button appears. And so I can go into my meet. Also, when the meet has been merged, this status changes to merge, so we know, and we're both set to not ready. So if I wanted to go make some changes and re-merge the meet with my, you know, if I came in and I looked at the meet and I saw that they had their fastest butterflyer and I was like, oh, I should put my fastest butterflyer in there too. Well, I'd have to change my entries and then have to mark myself, I'd have to mark myself ready again. I'd have to ask them to mark themselves ready again. And they might go, why are you doing this <laughs> after we thought everything was set? Why are you switching things around? So it kind of, puts a good amount of honesty on people that once you can see those entries, if you start trying to fiddle around with it, it's pretty evident because you have to get their buy-in to go ahead and merge the meet again. So uh, once it's all merged, we'll just click on this button and creates a meet for us in Meet Maestro. Okay, awesome. So if you haven't seen a Meet Maestro screen, welcome to Meet Maestro. This is what the interface looks like. Um, as you can see, it's super clean, um, very modern, easy to read, easy to use. So I'll give you a quick tour here. Uh, across the top, it's got our event um, and we can scroll through the different events. You can either use keyboard shortcuts or you can use these arrows. It tells what the event is. This tells me how many heats I have. Um, these are my swimmers within heat one in my six lanes. You can see I've got a couple of empty lanes. I'm currently in heat mode and uh, I can either click on the actual heat to go to the next one or I can use this arrow or I can use a keyboard shortcut um, or I can go in lane mode. So if you're using timer sheets and your timer sheets are sorted by lanes, then you can be entering your information in lane mode as well. Go back to heat mode as well. Um, we've got our scores here. And so um, right now, you, this tells me that I'm looking at the Marlin side of things. So if I look at this, I can also tell by looking at my team abbreviations that these are all Marlins. Um, and we'll take a look at the other team in just a second. But to complete the tour, on the left side, this is called our event status bar. And this allows us to click into any heat or event. And everything that's between these solid dark blue bars here, um, everything that's in between will be the same event. So we've got all of our IM heats, events and heats here. Then we skip up to freestyle. So these are all of our freestyle events, different ages, different genders. Now we're into breaststroke events. And then we got backstroke and butterfly 
uh, medley relay, freestyle relay. And the great thing too, is that these uh, bars are color coded and, and so, are the, so are the heat indicators here. So as an event, right now blue means that it's seated. As an event is in the midst of being processed with some um, times being entered, then the color will turn yellow. And then as it's scored out, once it's complete and becomes totally scored out, then it turns green. Um, so I'm going to jump over to an actual meet that was in the past that is partially complete with the same two teams. Um, and so now you can see as the event gets scored out and you go through all the events of the meet, you can start to see how much progress you're making in the meet and you can see how far along you are. And it's, it's this really cool indicator to tell you how things are going along. Uh, in this virtual Can you hear me now? Yes, Ellie's muted too. I think everybody got Yeah, muted. I was muted too, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's okay. Um, so I just said, did you hear me say that I hopped over to a meet that's partially complete? Yes, I can't hear Ellie. Now I'm muted too. Yes. <laughs> It wouldn't be a Zoom meeting if we didn't have like these muting issues. Right. Does everybody have their Zoom bingo card going? <laughs> <laughs> okay. People were saying people said yes when they said that you said you hopped over to, to another meet. Okay, mm -hmm. fantastic. Okay, good. And so what I was saying too is you probably didn't even need to hear me say is that you can see how this meet has made progress. You can see that we have so many of our uh, events completed and scored out. Um, at, but this yellow indicator here tells me, oh, I think I missed something over here. And so if I click on it, it takes me to event 17. And sure enough, I can see only one time has been entered. This heat is incomplete um, because this is yellow as well. And so I can go in and enter um, a new time. So let's give him uh, 32.50. Now, when I do that, let me go back. Let me give him 34.50. When I do that, uh, if you notice, I don't have to use punctuation and um, it, it automatically knows where to put the decimal point. So I'll show you a couple other things while we're on this screen. So up Tracy, here in the right just, corner. So, sorry, while you're talking about times, I've, I've had a few questions about using multiple times, like not just recording one. So if you can show folks how to pop out to have, um, be able to capture more than one time. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Great. for sure. And then there was someone asked, can we use two timers? Is it okay due to COVID? And I think that you know, those kind of questions are just really up to like on a team by team basis and what people are comfortable with. And, um, you know, I think generally speaking, if you're meet outdoors and you're masked up and you're a little bit apart, you're, you know, a little bit, you know, three to yeah. six feet type thing, you should be okay. And I've seen some teams where they'll, they'll have two timers, but they'll ask it to be two family members, like maybe a, a mother child parent child combo or spouse two spouses or things like that i've seen meets where they're trying to be exceedingly careful and only have one timer but they still wanted the two times and so they would have two stopwatches for the one person so there are creative ways to get around uh, and like ellie said it's just going to depend on what's going on in your in your environment and in your city and your locale um, but yeah regarding those those multiple watches that's a great question so this little um expander button will expand we can take up to three watches and if you don't want to see if let's say you've only got two watches and you don't want to see all three you can just uh, toggle through this and show how many um i think i had one is it the stingrays if you enter let's do a um so i'll do that time and then we'll toggle down I should get an indicator and we'll toggle down to one. Then I get this indicator that says there's a time hidden. And that just lets you know that, you, um, that you've that you got some times down there. And so that the time may not match the, in this case, my time was so close, but that, that would explain why your official time may or may not match what you're seeing under your watch here. Um, I'll show you one more thing. And yeah, I've got lots to show here. So that are probably along similar lines, Ellie. <laughs> and so right up here, like I said, we've got our scores going. And so even though um, right now I'm on the stingrays side of things, uh, again, you can see I've got stingray swimmers here. 
but you can see that the score is going along as both teams are competing. We can see the scores getting tallied as we go. I can also toggle up here to my record books. So for this particular event, the 50 freestyle boys, 13, 14, 50 free, I can see what my um, team, Marlin's team record is, my Stingrays pool record, and my, this is, um, this was a different meet that where the Stingrays were the home team. So we've got the Stingrays pool record and the Stingrays team record. So let's give um, Sylvester Tiberski a super fast time so you can see what that looks like. Hey, Stingrays. So let's give him a 24. Because I have extra watches. Might be because I have, there we go. There we go. Might be my zoom delay. So as I was entering his time, you see that the his whole road turned green and the records that he broke up here turned green as well. So you have this immediate feedback. If you're not on zoom, <laughs> you'll have immediate feedback that, that Sylvester broke a record when his time got entered. Um, so I'm going to show you, this was, uh, let's take a look at this. So right here, this candy striped segment tells me this is an indicator that my side is complete, but the other team hasn't completed it. And so, um, but once both teams have completed the event, then it turns green. So like Ellie was saying, as if both of you are swimming the 100 medley, you know, girls 9, 10, 100 medley, uh, and that 100 IM, as soon as both teams have done that, then this will turn green, the points will get ta tallied. And you can see here my heat place got added my, automatically. My overall place got added automatically. You can see I don't have a second place or a fourth place because it's from the other team, right? And then our points are being added automatically. And that would also have updated here as well. So um, let's see this event that's partially complete is event number 13. So we're gonna pop over to the Marlin side over here. And sure enough, here's my 13 that's got a yellow bar. I've got an incomplete time. And some other things that I wanted to show you is that we can enter codes in here. So I can do like a, an N for no swim. Uh, I can also do a Q for uh, DQ, or I can also check this DQ box here. And when I do a Q or check the box, either way, the DQ possible DQ codes will pop up and then I can just click on the right one. Uh, the default that we have in Meet Maestro is the USA Swimming DQ codes. We can also switch that quite easily to high tech. If you'll just let us know with our customer happiness team, send us a support request and we can switch that to high tech. Or if you don't use either of those and you have your own set of DQ codes, you can mail, email the, a copy of a DQ slip or a report that you have that shows your DQ codes and we can customize those for you. So that way, as your folks are entering, at least these codes will match what's on your slip. Um, so let's say false start. There we go. So it's recorded as a DQ. Okay, and then you can see my yellow, my heat indicator turned green and my event indicator turned green and we're ready to go. Tracy, um, mm -hmm. I'm getting a few questions about things like, um, like last minute changes on deck. So like maybe mm -hmm. if you can click into the act, uh, the, yeah. the athletes and then also like how to mark someone as an exhibition swimmer. So sort of things to do with that. And then I've also, um, so I just got a question about like heat sheets. And so just to let people know that there's another tab that we're going to get to that has like all of the reports and some of the setup and things like that, um, yeah. that we'll get to in a minute. But before, like, let's let mm -hmm. Tracy just continue on this path and we'll get to that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, those are really good questions. So I yeah. also um, want to show you one quick thing before I get to the uh, athlete edits, because that is definitely something we want to show you. But while I'm here entering times, um, let's go ahead and just make this easier to look at with one watch. Um, so in this particular meet, uh, since I switched over to a meet that was partially complete, I switched gears on you and the Stingrays are actually the home team. <laughs> but the Stingrays are the home team. Um, Ellie was saying how uh, with Meet Maestro, we have the ability to have a virtual meet with teams that have different pool configurations. So in our demo, what we have is um, the Marlins are competing at their own pool. Their pool has six lanes and it's a short course pool. But the home team in this case was the Stingrays. They're in short course meters and our system knows that in the setup, you would tell it that. And so as a result, when we're swimming our times here at the Marlins pool, we're, enter, we're able to enter the, the official time off the stopwatch 
I shouldn't call it official. We're entering the time off the stopwatch. Um, but then that'll get converted to become the official time. And then it's going to compare apples to apples against the times that are happening over at the Stingrays pool. And I can show you on their side too. They happen to have a five lane pool here. So you can see they've got five lanes. Um, it says that their time is in short course meters. So you can see that their official, I'm sorry, their stopwatch time 20566 matches their official time. Um, and because they're in the meters pool, if that makes sense. Then, uh, and I'll show you where to set all of that up too as well. So let's take, um, here we go. So I've got a heat here that hasn't been swum and I've got a few extra lanes and I'll just show you that we, you can just drag and drop to move your swimmers around. So let's say Rudy needs to be in lane two and Gustavo is gonna be in four. I can just move, I can drag Rudy up to two and it'll swap the two swimmers. Um, or let's say we wanna move Sylvester to lane one. I can just drag him to this empty lane one. As long as I drop it there and drop. There we go. There might be a little delay. There we go. Um, and then if I wanna fill up lane five, I can just click add an entry and I'm gonna tell it that I'm, I need to pick a Stingray swimmer and it'll show me um, my, it shows me I only have two swimmers available. So I'm going to pick, uh, I'm going to say Lionel wants to swim it. I can even give him a, an entry time if I know what it is. And if I want to mark him exhibition, I can do that here as well. And now that I'm making changes, any changes that are made on deck after the meet has been seated will show up with this red dog ear here. So you can see where any edits are being made. Um, I can even, let's take Lionel again. I can take Lionel and say, uh, I'm going to take him out of breaststroke. And let's say I want to put him in freestyle. It picks a heat and an empty lane that's available. And, a, and the system will, will know where it can put him. Or I can scratch him all together. From this window right here, just say scratch him from everything. Um, it will remind me that he's in a relay. So if I want to make that scratch, I need to make sure I've got a replacement for him. Let me go ahead and cancel this out here. Okay, we'll cancel all of that. All right. Um, yeah. Were there any other edits, athlete edits, Ellie? I have to say, I haven't been able to watch what you were demonstrating. Oh, okay. <laughs> I've been answering questions. Typing away. Yeah, okay. yeah. I'm not. I'm not yeah. getting. Um, oh, okay. So I just got a question about internet access um, and how mm -hmm. that works. So I'm assuming so, you, that's yeah, on your so list too. So let me show you as I type in a time. Um, If you look at this upper right corner where it says saved, that means that it's saving the time. So let's go. You can see, um, you can't see that my finger pointing at my screen <laughs> as I enter the time. If you watch the little rotator go and it says that it's being saved. So I'll do that one more time. So everybody watch. There we go. You see the little rotator says it's saving and then it'll say saved. So if you have an internet connection, so we do require internet to run the Maestro Meets. And so when you have a solid internet connection, then it's just going to keep flowing, keep saving and keep tallying as you go. If your internet cuts out, you can continue to enter times and the times will get cached and they will be saved. You will not lose that work. The only thing that won't happen, the thing that occurs in the cloud is all the scoring and the placing. Um, and so that part wouldn't happen in real time. But as soon as you are reconnected to the internet, then all of the scores and places would get automatically caught back up. We'd look at the cache of all the times that have been entered and get caught up. And we've had some teams, we don't necessarily recommend this, <laughs> but we have had some teams who, had, who lost the internet altogether and they just entered their whole meet as they went and then they got home, plugged into their Wi-Fi at home. And as soon as they plugged the computer in, everything got scored out and they didn't have to redo anything. Um, what we do recommend is that a lot of teams will find, they'll have a volunteer who's got their, um, they'll have da a great data plan, like unlimited data on their cell phone, and they'll just set up their cell phone as a hotspot. And that's how they keep that connection throughout the meet. Uh, we even have some teams where their cell, 
coverage at the pool is just a little not quite as strong. And so they'll get a booster device. There, it's a piece of hardware that you can get that will boost the cell signal. Okay, I'm going to switch back to the Marlins. Okay, awesome. So I think we've taken a look at almost everything that's on the screen. I'm sure I'll remember something in a minute here and we might pop back. But yes, as Ellie was saying, we're going to go to the settings now. So if you go to the little gear icon here, you can go to the settings and this is where we can see all of our reports. Um, one thing that's super exciting is when we're in this virtual scenario, let's take a look at our session report here. Um, those of you who have used Meet Maestro, you'll notice a change. We now have all of our controls for our reports on the right side instead of across the top. And part of that is because we're offering more and more filtering choices on some of the reports. And so it was getting pretty long. <laughs> so now it's on the side. Um, but you can see on the session report, it's just showing the stingrays and it's all, it's cal it has calculated the times necessary just for my side of the meet. Uh, if I wanted to just pick the Marlins, um, I could do that too. And then we can see their session report. They're starting at eight in the morning. They're starting at a different time. I'll show you where to make that change. Um, and it's only got their kiddos in it as well. So um, the heat sheet is the same way. And right now I'm only looking at the Marlins heat sheet. And so you can see with the team abbreviation here, it just shows the Marlins. So we've got event one, heat one. Um, looky here, if I show stingrays, they too will have an event one, heat one, right? But they're only the stingrays. And so, uh, and then their estimated start times are based on their side of the meet only, and all, knowing that there's only one team at that pool. So everything on the left side here, these are, um, these are reports that are typically used before the meet. You've got your heat sheet, your psych sheet, you can do timer sheets if you'd like. Um, we have a new report called the place judge form for those teams that only do place judging. You've got entry labels, athlete check-in is a great report that you can um, get mark the times on the kids' shoulders, et cetera. And then post-meet result at reports, these are things that are run either while the meet is running or after the meet is over. So let's take a look at the results here. Um, we'll look at all. So if we look at the results, you can see that it's combining the Marlins and the Stingrays. And so it's merging all of those results together. And we can see how the teams are doing against each other, who's scoring points, um, and what the team scores are going to add up to be, et cetera, et cetera. This is pretty cool that it all gets merged as we go. We also have a lot of different kinds of labels. Um, we can do a team score report as the meet is progressing and so forth. Um, if you wanted to, you, some of you are asking questions about making changes to your athlete. So you, as I showed you, you can make a change to an athlete from within the interface uh, where that athlete is entered in an event. But if you just wanted to, like if they called in sick and you just want to go in and, and handle all your sick kids at the beginning of the meet, you can just go to this athletes button and you can do a search for the athlete and then you can click on them here. Um, this one's not entered in the meet <laughs> at all. Let's do Let's cancel. Let's go. Here we go. Oh, um, and if you wanted to enter people, so let's say we let's say she shows up and says, I want to swim today, then from here I can see if there's an empty heat and lane uh, and get her added to the event. There we go. Okay. So the meet setup is typically if you're running a live meet, this is where you can change, make some changes to your meet configuration. Um, but we're actually gonna go to session since we're a virtual meet and we'll have similar setup here. And this is the place where you can say, okay, Stingrays have five lanes and they're short course meters, but the Marlins are six lanes and they're short course yards. Um, this, I showed you that we had different start times. This is where you could set up the different start times. And even, our default right now is to have uh, 30 seconds in between heats and then adding an extra 15 seconds for backstroke. Um, so for your virtual meets, if you wanted to go maybe stretch it out and give to kids a longer amount of time to get out of the water, for example, and kind of keep the starting blocks a little bit more clear of, of kids, 
you could even change that default. So if I did that, um, let's say I want to make this 45 seconds. Um, and, you know, let's say that I've never had a meet before. And so I want to, I need to set my lane up for the very first time and say that I have eight lanes or whatever, then I could do that here. And I, my zoom controls are covering, I don't know how to move this. Oh, there we go. Okay. So if I hit, if I hit update, then it'll automatically receive my meet with, um, all of the new times. And so if I went to a session report, that session report would be updated. Am I getting an error? Tracy, I'm just going to do a quick time check on us here. Yeah. Yeah. 12.50. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. So okay. So um, timing, it, this is where we're going to show a quick video here. This is where you can set up CTS. Uh, this is where you can tell it how many stopwatches you have. No, I think you tell it the stopwatches with the expander. That's new. That's a new difference. But this is also where you can set up um, CTS uh, wireless dolphin stopwatches, which we'll talk about in a minute. But we also have um, right now in beta mode, we're doing CTS touchpads. We're super excited about that. So stay tuned for more information about our CTS touchpad integration. And um, OK, super quick. So at the end of the meet, when you're ready, you can lock out your changes. And then as soon as, um, as you're done, if you hit transfer results, then those results just automatically go to the Swimtopia teams. There's no more file transfers, no more swapping. If you do need to make um, a create a results file though, you can do that under downloads. You can hit results and have it in either a high tech format or SD3 format and generate your file. And then you can send that file on. So with that, let's go to the video. I've got to um, show computer sound. Okay, great. All right, so Dolphin is super cool because it's wireless and you may not even need timer sheets anymore if you want to use your Dolphin system because it talks Meet Maestro works great with the Dolphin wireless stopwatches from Colorado Time Systems. The Dolphin timing system features a wireless adapter that can be used alone or connected to a starter, two to three wireless stopwatches per lane, and a base unit that connects to a laptop running the Dolphin software. When the race starts, all the watches are started automatically. Timers just need to stop their watches when the swimmers touch the wall. The race times are then wirelessly transmitted to the computer, eliminating the need to type in times by hand, saving a lot of time and avoiding errors. Setting up Dolphin and Meet Maestro is easy. Just click the gear icon, select timing setup and add a new timing system configuration. Select CTS Dolphin then select the folder where Dolphin is saving its data. Configure the expected number of times per lane and enable publishing the current event and heat to the Swimtopia mobile app. Once configured, Meet Maestro shares the meet event schedule with Dolphin so that advancing to the next heat before each start is easy. As each new heat is selected in Dolphin, the current event in heat is also updated in Meet Maestro and broadcast via the live bar in the Swimtopia mobile app. Meet Maestro adjusts the estimated start times for future heats automatically. Upcoming swim reminders are delivered via the Swimtopia mobile app, so you never miss a swim again. When a new race is started in Dolphin, the race clock appears and all the watch icons turn green. As timers stop their watches, the times start flowing in. Once the race is finished, the times are ready to load into Meet Maestro, where places and points are awarded and results are published live to the Swimtopia mobile app. Using the Dolphin system with Meet Maestro will help your meets run faster, reduce errors, and save time for your meet volunteers. Awesome. Um, so yeah, so if anybody's been interested in Dolphin and how that integrates, you can see that it just talks directly to Meet Maestro, and that's a great way um, to, the kids love it, the parents love it, timers love it, and it, you don't have people having to enter times anymore, so it's kind of awesome. Next, we'll be talking about the mobile app here. The first thing I'd like to show you is a free feature that we have, which is the orange bar that you see at the top. That's our live event heat bar, and it's a handy way for every parent to see exactly which event and heat we're on. 
Uh, many pools will have a sign at the pool that shows the event in the heat and that requires a volunteer to update it and it also requires that you can be in a place where you can see the sign. This way parents can have a live event heat bar right in their pocket and no matter where they are they'll know exactly which event and heat we're on. This can be done by a volunteer who will just, it's actually the best volunteer job just to update next heat, next heat, next heat. Or if your team is using the latest version of Dolphin, this will actually be updated automatically and a volunteer is not even needed for that. We're going to do a tour of the rest of the screen here. If you scroll on down right now, it looks like uh, the top two events are actually completed. If um, Right now I have the pro version of the mobile app, but if I had the free version, it would just say completed and I wouldn't see the time. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. But included in the free version is an overview of all of my favorite swimmers. It shows the events that they're swimming in and the heat and the lane assignments and also any seed times that they might have. If I scroll on down, I can also see the job assignments for the parents of the family. So it shows that one parent is doing the um, girls 7-8 lineup and the other parent is first shift timer. Uh, actually, we have a job sign-up button that's open typically in a meet that wouldn't be open, but that does show you that you can sign up for jobs from within the mobile app uh, prior to the meet. Okay, we'll scroll on up here and take a look again, once again, at the live event heat bar. So I can tap on the button on the right here and it will open up the, uh, an, a bar that shows upcoming events. So it shows the very next event is going to be event 25 and an estimated time of 5.31 p.m. I can also tap on the upcoming tab here. If I have the pro version, I can see upcoming start times for estimated start times for all of the events that my favorite swimmers are in. And the handy thing is, is that for teams that are using the live event bar and keeping that updated with either the volunteer or the dolphin system, these estimated start times will be updated dynamically. And if the meet is running ahead of time, then, which everybody loves to hear that a meet is running faster than usual, these start times will actually be updated to match that. So you'll never miss a swim again. Um, okay, but that is a pro version. So I'm going to go ahead and make this live bar back to the one bar again. And so let's keep an eye on this. I'll show you how that works. So if you just keep an eye on the event number, right now we're on event 24, and you saw that it switched to event 25. And then we're going to watch the heat number here. It says that we're on heat one, and there we go. We switch to heat two. And uh, this is perfect, event 25, heat two. And this is exactly where my swimmer ought to be. So if I refresh my screen, this should update automatically here. Uh, if you look at, there we go. If you look at uh, my little swimmer, Tabitha, in event 25, the live icon shows up on the right side and that means she's in the water so hopefully I'm standing at the pool right now. Let's take a look at the heat sheet though. Uh, next thing we'll show, so if I tap on events I can see the heat sheets. Okay, and this shows me my starred swimmer, Tabitha, is in lane five. And I can also see heat one and the heat and lane assignments, and also heat three. Let's scroll on down, and we can see their seed times as well. So we're going to go back to the overview and take a look. And by now, Tabitha has swum. It shows partial results of a time of 28.45. So far, she's in second place, and this is being updated as we speak live, as the other times are being entered by the computer people. And voila, we have our final results. Tabitha came in second place. Woohoo! Good job. She earned five points for the team. Uh, we also have alerts set up where I forgot to mention that with the upcoming swims, you'll receive an upcoming swim alert and you'll also re receive an alert for live results. And so you can see that this is a, just such a great way to keep parents involved and up to date with the meet. Uh, one thing that's really handy between the live bar and the estimated start times being updated real time as the meet goes on, and then also getting push alerts for upcoming swims with a reminder that says your swimmer is about to swim, 
Um, the great thing is, is that if parents are not allowed at the pool for social distancing purposes, then they can keep an eye on the progress of the meet and know exactly where the meet is and know when to uh, come in and watch their swimmer if you're allowing parents to come in just in time to watch the swims and then you know, leave again, then at least they'll know when to be there and they won't miss that swim. Also, we have a new feature this year called Guest Mode. And so if grandparents want to watch the meet and follow the progress, they can sign in as a guest. Uh, and that, again, they can show up and watch the swim just in time and then uh, go back to the car, go back to the parking lot or attend to the parking lot. Uh, we've also heard of some teams who are live streaming their meets uh, via video, video stream. And so same thing, by having this, the pro version and having these updates that show when the next swim is coming up, then even if people are following along via video, they'll be able to tune in at just the right time to watch the swim. Some other things that we'll show you is that we have a team feature, and this shows us the team scores so far. We can see the combined scores, the men's scores, the women's scores. We can also click uh, on the team itself, and I can see all of the team members. Let's say I had a, a next door neighbor who's a friend of ours, and I want to follow his swim so I can star him and make him a favorite swimmer. And I can even decide whether I want to receive those upcoming swim reminders for him and notifications for his results. So if I go here to my favorites, I can see all of my favorite swimmers. That includes my little next door neighbor, Stevie, my own kids, Calvin and Tabitha. Those aren't my real kids' names, but for the demo purposes. And then from here, I can set their notifications. And I also see an overview of their events. And I can see what the status is, whether it's completed, whether it's in the water, and I can also see estimated start times if it hasn't occurred yet. So again, you can see these are some great features to keep parents up to date, keep parents involved, and especially if it's a virtual meet, you can have that exciting live virtual feeling and see the results as they're coming in against the other team, even if you're not face-to-face -face in person. And that it's just a great way to keep parents involved. A few questions came in while we were showing some of those videos. Um, we can certainly send a link to that dolphin video uh, afterwards as well to sort of show you more about that. Um, we're getting some questions about, could, would you use one watch with dolphin? Um, you know, you can, you can use one watch with dolphin. Most, most teams worry about the um, accuracy of that because if that one person makes a mistake, uh, that can be a little tricky, but but you can a lot of teams run Dolphin and also have like a stopwatch as well so that you've got something completely separate um, as a backup and sort of people are writing that down. So it sort of really depends on, you know, how you want to do that, I guess. Um, and then I got a question about can you buy um, a league, buy pro for a group instead of parents subscribing? We actually just don't have a way to do that right now. Um, it's all run through Apple App Store, you know how it goes, or Google Play Store. Um, and so it is a, on a parent by parent basis that, that people will sign up for the mobile app. Um, and so, okay. Um, yeah, so that was our, you know, um, most of what we wanted to cover today. Um, let me just get on here. Uh, one thing I did wanna mention before we move on is that, um, if you're just using, if you're already a Swimtopia customer, obviously you get everything. Everything's included with Swimtopia. Everything we've shown you, many, many things we haven't shown you. You know, you get your website, your communications features, your volunteer management, all that good stuff. If you do sign up for just a Meet Maestro account, so if you're inviting another team so that they can run Meet Maestro with you, or if you're someone who only has a Meet Maestro account or thinking about using our free Meet Maestro accounts for the summer, you do get more than just Meet Management. We just, just want to point that out. Um, Meet, Meet Maestro, the way you get an account with that is kind of like we're merging team and Meet software together. You get some features that are traditionally done in team management software. Like you can keep track of your times histories. You can run your Meet entries. You can, um, you can, you know, keep track of your records and report on all of your times. We have a fantastic one-click relay generator as part of um, our software. So you do get all of those features with a Meet Maestro account. Um, and then, yeah, just keeping in mind that whether you're, you're um, if you're already using Swimtopia, that all that's included. And then if you are using Meet Maestro, there are those extra features as well. Um, 
And then if you need help, I know, you know, this has gone really quickly. There's probably about a thousand things we haven't been able to show you because our software does a lot. It's extremely powerful, like I said at the beginning. Um, in our help center, help.swimtopia.com, there's a whole section on Meet Maestro. So um, definitely check that out. We've got some help center articles that kind of help you walk you through setting up a demo meet. Um, and so that you can just test like with your own data and jump into the Meet Maestro interface and see that how that looks. And then we also have a lot of um, COVID planning resources that we mentioned earlier and that you should have received in your invitation email as well. So definitely um, do be checking those out. And, and um, yeah, I think that's, that's most of what we've covered and we've hit 107. So sorry for going over, folks. And we really, really appreciate your time um, today. Just as a reminder, we will be offering, um, uh, we will be offering a link to this recording of this webinar, mm -hmm. um, so that we'll be sharing that with all registrants, um, and and so you can share it with your other members of your team and things like that. So. Um, the other yeah. thing I wanted to add real quick to that, I, I'm looking through some of the questions. Yeah, the other thing yeah. I wanted to add, I know this came up, is asking if some teams are running their, I know we showed the excitement of being able to run it side by side, head to head. As soon as the event is complete, you get to see how they did. But it is very common that some, and it's going to happen with my team as well, that sometimes you can't get pool access at the same time. And so we may even have to run our meets during practice. So we've got our, our nine tens are here. Let's just run them and time them and enter the time. And as you can see from Meet Maestro, you can just plop a parent down and have them just key in those times. It's super easy. You don't have to have your high tech expert there to do it. And um, once the meet is merged, you know, if I need to run mine at my Friday morning practice and then the other team does theirs Saturday morning as a meet, you can see how I can just do my side. They can just do their side. And as soon as all the events are complete, it'll get scored out. Great. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, awesome. I, I do we think that's I'll everything? be happy to stick around and answer more chats if they want to come in. And if anybody asked a question in chat and it didn't get answered, don't hesitate to ask again. So, um, yeah, I'll be happy to stick around. But other than that, I think we're officially finished. But we really the last thing I want to leave you with is that we had, as I said, we had a, quite a few teams who ended up using Meet Maestro last year for the, and many of them for the first time so that they could do these virtual meets. And there were a handful of leagues that um, that came on board with Meet Maestro for the first time, and we, we had offered them some training times and to get their computer reps up to speed with Meet Maestro, but they didn't. We didn't ever end up setting up the training time. And then when their first meets came along, I told our customer happiness team, "Okay, we've got ten meets with a new league on Tuesday. Be ready to answer the phones and help." Didn't get any phone calls. Next week, same thing. Didn't get any phone calls. So what I want to leave you with is that. This is easy to use. It's easy to learn, easy to use. And the teams that have switched to Meet Maestro love it. So I hope you guys, if you haven't already, I hope you give it a try. All right. Yeah, All I'm right. gonna just try to answer some qu new questions. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Um, everyone's like welcome to drop off and thank you so much for your time. But I'm seeing a question here about um, if you get a one month free trial, does it cover six weeks? of subscription. And I'm just not sure where the one month is coming from. Our Swimtopia free trial is a two week free trial. What happens at the end of the two weeks with a Swimtopia trial is we send you an invoice with net 30 day terms. And so you really get a whole nother month. So um, our free trial with Swimtopia actually lasts about six weeks. So, um, you know, that that is sort of a, a season for most people. Um, with Meet Maestro, if you open an account with Meet Maestro, it will be completely free all the way through July 31. So we will not even be sending you an invoice or talking to you about payment until July 31. So please use it all summer long, enjoy it, um, invite other teams to play along with you and hopefully you can have a good time. Um, Yes, we will definitely be sending the recording to everyone. You don't need to request it. We're just going to send it out to all registrants. We're probably going to send it to everyone, even if they weren't registered, quite honestly, because um, there was a lot, of, a lot of interest in this webinar. So um, you'll definitely be getting an email with a link. Tracy, do you see anything else that we've missed? No, lots of wonderful comments about our customer service. Thank you, guys. That means a lot to us. You guys mean a lot to us. And so we're happy to provide the support. Oh, that's a great comment about multiple computers. I didn't get to mention that. Ellie, you want to talk about that? Yeah, yeah. Um, 
I, I mentioned it in chat earlier, but you can run multiple computers totally with Meet Maestro. That's a great thing about it being on the internet. Um, a lot of our teams actually do sort of like one, one computer entering the boys' times, one computer entering the girls' times, and one person entering DQ. So certainly with our software, you can just bring your laptop with ho from home. You don't have to download anything. So it really makes it low maintenance and, and low... Um, you know, barriers to entry for uh, for volunteers to get involved and help you on the day with it, with meet with meet data entry. Um, we've really upgraded. If you use Swimtopia in the past, we have done some major performance improvements. And so now, when you're entering data on those two different computers, you're going to see it instantly come up on your screen. The data that's being entered by the other computer. Um, it's really practically instant now. So um, that really helps too. You you just want to sort of make sure that people aren't entering trying to enter the same information at the same time. That's where like the boys computer, girls computer kind of comes in handy. Um, but it's that, uh, that's a really great way to do it is to use more computers um, than just one. And you're not having to like, if you ever wanted to do that in a meet in the past, you know that you would have had to set up, um, yeah, the, the computers need to be, to all have internet access, they do, yeah. But you don't need to set up any kind of like, you know, LAN network like you used to, where you had to like actually network your computers on deck to be able to run multiple computers at once. Mm -hmm. You don't need that with our software, as long as you've got your internet access going. Um, <laughs> thank you. Yes, we try to solve problems. <laughs> um, an iPad would work. I don't, um, you need some RAM. I, I believe the answer to this question. So people have asked me before if they can do it in a Chromebook. Um, I, I think you can see data on an iPad, Tracy. Do you know the iPad? Um, yeah, so Dolphin, there's a question about Dolphin needing a download rather than being an internet. Yeah, Dolphin you do need, and um, I'm not sure if that was mentioned, in, I don't think it was mentioned in the video. Meet Maestro, mm -hmm. we have a Meet Maestro desktop app. So what you need to do if you're gonna use Dolphin is you are going to, yeah, sorry about that, Rip. Um, if you're gonna use Dolphin, you will download the desktop version of Meet Maestro. It still requires an internet access to use Meet Maestro on your desktop version, but we have a desktop version and that's what integrates with the Dolphin system. Dolphin does need to run, um, you will have to have the software downloaded on your PC. So Dolphin requires a PC. So, um, but you can have like one computer running the Dolphin um, and another one running Meet Maestro. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's how my team does it. So um, yeah, but, but Dolphin will require, you also need to make sure if you already have Dolphin that you've updated your firmware. We've got this kind of all this information in our help center, but you do need to be on version, I think it's five Tracy, something like that of Dolphin firmware. That so sounds... you just need to make sure your firmware is mm -hmm. updated um, to run with Dolphin. Yep. And Cheryl's having problems getting into Meet Maestro. So I'm trying to, Cheryl, if you um, look at the top of your browser in your Swimtopia Meet, if you can copy and paste that into the chat, I can take a look. Okay, any other questions? These are a great question. They've slowed down now. Yeah. <laughs> They're not coming in anymore. Yeah. We do have in our help center, there is an article that says how, um, how to run a test meet. So if you wanna just play around and try it, take a look at that help center article and follow those steps. I'm going to pull up um, our help center, Tracy. I had it okay. open, oh, but we yeah, were yeah. kind of we were running low on time. So um, Nan is asking about CTS Touchpad. So we, we'll add your name to the list, Nan. Right now we're like in super super beta, and so when we go to like beta level two, where we're look where we're ready to start releasing that to our beta testers, we definitely would love to have your help with that. Okay, so just while Cheryl's bringing her thing up, um, for those people that are left, if you haven't used our help center before, please jump in there. It's super, um, it's very, very comprehensive. So you can go to this whole section on Meet Maestro um, is a great kind of place to have a look around the test drive, um, things that both Tracy and I have both mentioned. This is a great way um, to kind of just jump into a Meet Maestro meet and be able to see Meet Maestro itself, you know, like in action, just without in a no, you know, in a test situation. Um, so that's really handy. And then I, I'm, I'm you're, you probably showed it, Tracy, but I was so heads down. You can, if you're in Meet Maestro itself, you can click on the um, on the little question mark tab, and it drops you straight mm -hmm. into that section of our help center as well. No, so um, even if you're in the middle of your Meet Maestro meet, 
that's what that little um, question mark does right there. And then of course, if you're in your managed team interface in Swimtopia, just to point out really quickly, we've got the help tab down here. Um, and then we also have this help center um, tab up here. And so both of those, this help center tab jumps you into the main help center. This help tab sort of tries to help you right there on the screen, you know, like, so if I click into a, to a help center article, it doesn't take me to the whole um, Zendesk website. It's just keeping me, keeping all the data um, that's being, you know, right there. It sort of shows me what's in the help center just on my screen. I don't even have to leave my Swimtopia interface. Now, where are we with anything else? That... We have CTS touchpads. Can I get a copy of the beta mode? Yeah, okay, you answered that one already, Tracy, good job. Um, are you trying to help Cheryl separately, Tracy? I am, yeah, okay. I am. Um, I, I see we have 33 participants on that could just be people that kind of went to lunch and left us running. <laughs> either that or they like to, I, sometimes I just oh, like just to- Just listening to other questions. Yeah, listening to other questions. Yeah, I love yeah. it. Yeah. Um, anyway, guys, we're totally just hanging around for you. So if anyone's still left on um, and has more questions, we're happy to show you around. Yeah, Thank we're really you glad you guys your could time. join us. Yeah, sorry, Ellie. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks everyone. If you do have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Like Ellie said, you can go to our uh, help center. You might find the answer there. Otherwise there's a uh, submit a ticket at the top. You can always send your questions to the submit a ticket. And um, Cheryl, I am working on getting that resolved. I got the same error. I was able to replicate it and I'm, I've uh, pinged our technical team to see if I can get an, a quick answer. Yeah. Um, do we have a test meet, meet Maestro database and I can test with Dolphin? Um, Tracy, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Do you have any old, um, if you ran meets in Dolphin in the past, you can actually, and if you had Swimtopia already in previous seasons, I'm not sure if you did Rip, but um, if you had Swimtopia in previous seasons and you have like still the Dolphin Oh, you didn't have it. Okay, got it. Okay, you didn't have it. All right. Um, I'm not sure how, if we can help with that. I can't think of a way we could really help with a test database. I'm sorry. We've had teams before that have had it in the past and you can rerun a meet and you can actually pull in those old files with the meet in Meet Maestro, you know, that was previously run in Meet Manager. But um, I don't think I can think of a way to share a test database. I'm sorry. We often just set up, um, so you have, do you have Dolphin already, Rip? Yeah, okay, you have Dolphin already. Okay, so we set up, like you can just create um, a test meet with some entries. I'm not sure if Tracy um, showed you much of our entries tab. Again, I was sort of heads down. But um, to create, you can create a meet, just sort of create an intra squad meet. Um, uh, create some entries for your team and um, hang on, I'm trying to get this unlocked so I can show you. So a really quick way um, to just, you know, we often do a lot of testing with our dolphin system this way. Um, just once you have, you can import, um, you know, import your time, your team manager history. So you have all your kids and your times, or if you're coming from team unify, you can import a team roster from team unify to get all your kids in the system. Um, and then the quickest way to create entries in like sort of like a new test meet is to go to this edit entries interface and select all for a couple of kids, for a couple of events, you can just sort of select all. Um, and then, and I don't want that to save, so that's cool. So you just go to like another, all, a few different age groups, so do a few select alls to create some entries, um, go to the, to the merge export tab, um, and just, it'll just be your team. So you just say that you're, you're ready to export um, and you can just build a meet, lock out your entry changes, of course, um, build a meet just off those couple of entries from your team and just kind of start, start running it. Just go from a fresh dolphin meet and uh, some demo data and just try that. So I think I'm glad you mentioned um, entering a few entries there, Ellie. So I think that's was the problem with the the meet that I was checking on that was not having that was not loading the meet maestro. So yeah, do make sure that you have a couple of entries, at least a handful of oh. entries in there. 
Um, and that, and the, because it's going to seed the entries. And so if you want to see swimmers seeded into those lanes and with their seed times and all the stuff that, that a meet is going to look like, then the more entries you can kind of dummy up, then the more you can see what it will look like. Sometimes cool. it, it doesn't take too long to create a dummy meet. I, as we know from our demo meets, <laughs> sometimes <laughs> just go through give her throw everybody into butterfly they'll love that <laughs> cool so, awesome all right good all right. good glad and uh, one more question thanks sue can you import the meat setup for meat manager that already has all the parameters set up yes that's a good question can you import the meat setup for meat manager that has the parameter set up our league normally provides all of the meat manager setups to everyone in the league um, and I'm assuming that's through an EV3 file. So yes, when you create a new meet, if you add, click on the add a swim meet and then enter import meet event file, that should be that EV3 file. Uh, and then once you select that file, it'll build out the meet for you. Now, once you've done that, if, um, if you wanted to create any meets yourself that have the same setup, then you can save that setup as a meet template, and then you can apply that meet template to future meets so that you're not necessarily waiting to receive that EV3 file from somebody else um, or always relying on that sort of thing. So you could create a new meet and then apply it, the template. I'm trying to find that. Um, keep having to move my chat window. So right. yeah. <laughs> So you can save any meet once you've created a meet, you've brought in an EV3 file. Mm -hmm. um, you'll go into the meet itself, go to this meet setup tab, go to the events tab and save as template. And there you go, you've got your template. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. then also you can also create event files from here, right, Tracy? Um, like if you have set up a, is that from this screen that you create an EV3 file? Yeah, download events file. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you, um, if you make a list of events, um, or something like that, you can actually download it as an EV3 file as well, or if you make some edits to one. How do you create export of events and heats after meet is merged to upload to the Dolphin system? Um, gosh. I can't remember the answer. It, it links, I mean, it links automatically. So where Tracy, um, Okay, so if the event file does not necessarily show all the parameters to run the meet, it'll only show the events or the entry limits. Yeah, yeah. So um, in Swimtopia, once you've pulled in the EV3 file, so I'm jumping all over the place here, mm -hmm. you can then set up the entry rules yourself and, and save that as part of your meet template as well. So you can add all that good stuff in there and it will be saved as part of the meet template, even though it's not in the event file. Um, so when you first bring in an event file, you will need to pop in here and, and tighten up all your entry rules and all that kind of stuff to create a really, um, to create the, the, the meet that you really want it to be. So you do have to kind of hop in here and click a few buttons to begin with. And then that will save as part of the, um, as part of the event file. So in terms of the, um, so neither, Tracy, neither of us have the desktop version of Meet, meet Maestro to my knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. And I think to, in order to show the timing setup really completely, um, we need to have, um, I think it was in Mason's video, there was one point in Mason's video um, where it had a way, there's a way that you choose the directory that you're going to, um, let's just, let's pull up his video real quick and I'll try to pause it in the, in the moment that we need. Colorado time systems. The Dolphin timing system features a wireless adapter that can be used alone or connected to a starter two to three wireless stopwatches per lane, and a base unit that connects to a laptop running the Dolphin software. When the race starts, all the watches are started automatically. Timers just need to stop their watches when the swimmers touch the wall. The race times are then wirelessly transmitted to the computer, eliminating the need to type in times by hand, saving a lot of time and avoiding errors. Setting up Dolphin and Meet Maestro is easy. Just click the gear icon, select timing setup, and add a new timing system configuration. Select CTS Dolphin, then select the folder. Where okay, so I'm just kind of pausing here. My understanding is that in this step, um, Tracy, does this sound right to you, where you pick the directory? It kind of automatically starts talking to, to Dolphin at that point. Um, that's that's what I think too, but I'm confirming. Or Dolphin is saving its data. 
right? So Dolphin's saving its data there. Oh, there's a, there's a, there's a, um, I think some of the settings in Dolphin, you have to like click something to, to, um, to get it. I might be better off looking at our help center than looking at this video. Mm -hmm. Don't you think? Um, Tracy, what do you think? Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. I, <do. laughs> I think what you said sounds right. I think checking the help center would be smart. And I also am checking with Chris. Oh, don't check with Chris. I mean, I think it should be in our, yeah, it right. be in our, in our stuff. Um, there is. Windows app. So you got to download the Windows app. Make sure you have your CTS Dolphin software updated. Got to have that firmware updated. Um, yeah, so there's some things available in Meet Maestro that are not available in Meet Manager. So this ability to have the event list show up in, um, in Meet Maestro is not something you can even do with Meet Manager. So it'll be like, there are some new things that you're gonna see um, when you've up, updated Dolphin that you've probably never seen before, right? So you've got to uh, verify that your events are loaded. Your screen should look similar to this. Um, yeah. Am I, so anyway, <laughs> Tracy and I are not, uh, not super, We we have both been swim coaches. We have never been the computer <laughs> operators for the meet. Um, our CEO was a computer operator for his team for 15 years. So he is like the, uh, yeah, yeah. Just got to kind of bear with us on our limited. <laughs> we are not that's the experts. That's why we had the video of the. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. And I also have a Mac. So I've literally never, never dived into that whole dolphin situation because it is PC, PC reliant. Um, but yeah, yeah. So, but we've got like, our, hopefully this helps in a documentation. Like if you sort of dive in and you've got everything open, you'll start recognizing what you're meant to do and just kind of working through it step-by-step. Step. But um, we also have our customer happiness team that answers the phone, which is really nice. Um, so if you call us, <laughs> we pick up. Um, yeah. And um, yeah, Usually. so they can also uh, help walk you through it. A couple of our, top customer happiness team members are sort of have done their due diligence on this dolphin situation to try to make sure they can help people. Um, and then of course, Colorado time systems has its own support as well. If it gets to, you know, that it's hard for us to try to support a software that's not ours. So that's the mm -hmm. other thing you might also need to contact dolphin directly at some point. Um, I think somewhere in our help center, there's even a, a, a link to their documentation to Tracy. I'm pretty sure we would link to that somewhere. Just like in WePay, we link to the WePay customer support info. And I was doing the same thing. I was checking the comments, but did you say that Dolphin has a rental system? It does, it does. And I had that info open here. Okay. So, um, and this was the rental program info. So mm -hmm. if you don't have um, Dolphin already, um, they've started kind of this new program where you can, um, you can rent to buy basically. And, um, so it's kind of a little bit more affordable or sort of lets you break up essentially um, some of the payments and stuff there. Mm -hmm. So uh, depending on how many watches you think you need and how many lanes you have, um, it looks like they've updated their, uh, they've updated this page. There used to be some pricing information on this page. It looks like they've updated it and it doesn't have it anymore. But my, from memory, I think about six watches and three timers per lane was about three and a half thousand dollars something like that but one thing to say about dolphin is that once you buy it it is a sunk cost they're not like swimtopia is a yearly subscription um if, as long as you want to keep using us we'll charge you every year with dolphin it's like you buy it forget it you know most teams have it for 10 you know 15 years and they're not they're not having to so that is one nice thing about about the dolphin system the other thing that we've seen is that some leagues have invested in the Dolphin system and they may even just kind of spread that cost to their teams in a fashion. But the, what the league will do is they'll buy half as many Dolphin systems as they have teams. Because if you're running dual meets, you're only having, if you've got 
20 teams in your league and you're running dual meets every Saturday, well, you're only having 10 meets going on at a time. So they'll only buy 10 sets of dolphin, if you will. And then they've got a system for getting it to the right pool at the right time. Of course, with virtual meets, that wouldn't necessarily help. But yeah. in, when we get back to live dual meets, that's an option to consider too. Cool. Yeah. I think we're running out of questions. We are. Are we good? Yes. Thank you so much for joining us, everyone. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Okay. Well, I'll stop share and we'll leave you there. Thanks so much for your time, everyone. And Thanks, um, everyone. we'll be in touch. And so you'll have our contact details if you have more questions. Okay. Okay. Bye guys.